Hello everyone. We'll start with the second last chapter of Modern History by Bipin Chandra. The chapter name is Struggle for Swaraj One, from nineteen nineteen to nineteen twenty seven. Let's start with it. The third and the last phase of the national movement began in nineteen nineteen when the era of popular mass movements was initiated. The Indian people waged perhaps the greatest mass struggle in the world history, and India's national revolution was victorious. as we have seen in the previous chapter a new political situation was nurturing and maturing during the war years 1914 to 1918 nationalism had gathered its forces and the nationalists were expecting a major political gains after the war and they were willing to fight back if their expectations were thwarted the economic situation in the post war years had taken turn for the worse there was first a rise in prices and then a depression in the economic activity indian industries which had pro- prospered during the war because foreign imports of manufactured goods had ceased now faced losses and closure moreover foreign capital now began to be invested in india on a large scale the indian industrialists wanted protection of their industries through imposition of high custom duties and grant of government aid they realized that a strong nationalist movement and an independent indian government alone could secure these the workers and artisans facing unemployment and high prices also turned actively towards the nationalist movement indian soldiers returned from their triumphs in africa asia and europe imparted some of their confidence and their knowledge to the wide world of rural areas the peasantry groaning under de- deepening poverty and high taxation was waiting for a lead the urban educated indians faced increasing unemployment thus all sections of indian society were suffering economic hardships compounded by the droughts high prices and epidemics the international situation was also favorable to the resurgence of nationalism the first world war gave a tremendous impetus to nationalism all over asia and africa in order to win popular support for their war effort the allied nations as britain the united states france italy and japan promised a new era of democracy and national self determination to all peoples of the world but after their victory they showed little little willingness to end the colonial system on the contrary at the paris peace conference and in the different peace settlements all the wartime promises were forgotten and in fact betrayed the ex colonies of the defeated powers germany and turkey in africa west asia and east asia were divided among the victorious powers militant disillusioned and nationalism began to arise everywhere in asia and africa in india while the british government made a hell half hearted attempt at constitution reform it also made it clear that it had no intention of parting with political power or even sharing it with indians another major consequence of the world war was the erosion of the white man's prestige the european powers had from beginning of their imperialism utilized the notion of racial and cultural superiority to maintain their supremacy but during the war both sides carried on intense propaganda against each other exposing the opponent's brutal and uncivilized colonial record naturally the people of the colonies tended to believe both sides and lo- and to lose their awe in white man's superiority a major impetus to the national movements was given by the impact of the russian revolution on 7th november 1917 the bolshevik communist party led by v i lenin overthrew the tsarist regime in russia and declared the formation of the first socialist state the soviet union in the history of the world the new soviet regime electrified the colonial world by unilaterally renouncing its imperialist rights in china and other parts of asia by granting the rights of self determination to the former tsarist uh, colonies in asia and giving an equal status to the asian nationalities within its border which had been oppressed as inferior and conquered by people by the previous regime 
the russian revolution put heart into the colonial people it brought home the colonial people the important lesson that immense strength and energy resided in the common people if the unarmed peasants and workers should carry out a revolution against their domestic tyrants then the people of the subject nations too could fight for their independence provided they were equally well united organized and determined to fight for freedom the nationalist movement in india was also affected by the fact that the rest of the afro asian world was also convulsed by nationalist agitations after the war nationalism surged forward not only in india but also in ireland turkey egypt and other arab countries of northern africa and west asia iran afghanistan burma malay indonesia indo china philippines china and korea the government aware of the rising tide of nationalist and anti government sentiments once again decided to follow the policy of carrot and the stick in other words the concessions and the concessions of concessions and repression the carrot was represented by the montague clemsford reforms the montague clemsford reforms In 1918 Edwin Montagu the secretary of state and Lord Clemsford the viceroy produced their scheme of constitutional reforms which led to the enactment of the government of india act 1919 the provincial legislative councils were enlarged and the majority of their members were to be elected the provincial governments were given more powers under the system of diarchy under this system some subjects such as finance law and order were called as reserved subjects and remained under the direct control of the governor others such as education public health and local self government were called transferred subjects and were to be controlled by the ministers responsible to the legislatures this also meant that while some of the spending departments were transferred the governor retained complete control over the finances the governor could moreover overrule the ministers on any grounds that he considered special at the center there were to be two houses of the legislature the lower house the legislative assembly was to have 41 nominated members in total strength of 144 the upper house the council of state was to have 26 nominated and 34 elected members the legislature had virtually no control over the governor general and his executive council on the other hand the central government had unrestricted control over the provincial governments moreover the right to vote was severely restricted in 1920 the total number of voters was 9 lakh and 9874 for the lower house and 17364 for the upper house indian nationalists had however advanced far beyond such halting concessions they were no longer willing to be satisfied with the shadow of political power the indian national congress met in a special session at bombay in august 1918 under the presidentship of hasan imam to consider the reform proposals it condemned them as disappointing and unsatisfactory and demanded effective self government instead some of the veteran congress leaders led by surendranath banerjee were in favor of accepting the government proposals they left the congress at this time and founded the indian liberal federation they came to be known as the liberals and played a minor role in major indian politics hereafter the rowlett act while trying to appease indians the government of india was ready with repression throughout war repression of nationalists had continued the terrorists had uh, the terrorists and revolutionaries had been hunted down hanged and imprisoned many of the nationalists such as abul kalam azad had been also kept behind bars the government now decided to arm itself with more far reaching powers which went against the accepted principles of rule of law to be able to suppress these nationalists who would refuse to be satisfied with the government office with the official reforms in march 1919 it passed the rowlett act even though every single indian member of the central legislative council opposed it 
This act authorized the government to imprison any person without trial and conviction in a court of law. The act would thus also enable the government to suspend the rights of habeas corpus which had been the foundation in of civil liberties in Britain. Chapter number 12 page number 221 Mahatma Gandhi assumes leadership. The Rowlett Act came like a sudden blow. To the people of India promised extension of democracy during the war the government step appeared to be a cruel joke it was like a hungry man expecting being expecting bread being offered stones instead of democratic process had come further restriction of civil liberties unrest spread in country and a powerful agitation against the act arose during this agitation a new leader mohandas karamchand gandhi took command of the nationalist movement the new leader made good one of the basic weaknesses of the previous leadership he had evolved in his struggle against racialism in south africa a new form of struggle cooperation and a new technology struggle satyagraha which could be put into practice against the british in india he had moreover a basic sympathy for the understanding and understanding of the problems and the psychology of indian peasantry he was therefore able to appeal to it and bring it into mainstream the national movement he was thus able to arouse and unite all sections of the indian people in a militant mass national movement gandhi ji and his ideas M K Gandhi was born on 2nd October 1869 in Porbandar in Gujarat after getting his legal education in Britain he went to South Africa to practice law imbued with a high sense of justice he was revolted by the racial injustice discrimination and degradation to which the indians had to submit in south african colonies Indian laborers who had gone to South Africa and the merchants who followed were denied right to vote. They had to register and pay a poll tax. They could not reside except in pre-described locations, prescribed locations which were insanitary and congested. It came in some of South African colonies. The Asians also the Africans could not stay outdoors after 9 p.m. nor could they use public footpaths gandhi soon became the leader of the struggle against these conditions and during 1893 to 1914 was engaged in a heroic though unequal struggle against racist racist authorities of south africa it was during this long struggle lasting nearly two decades that he evolved the technique of satyagraha beyond based on truth and non violence the ideal satyagrahi was to be truthful and perfectly peaceful but at the same time he would refuse to submit to what he considered wrong he would accept suffering willingly in the course of struggle against the wrong doer this struggle was to be a part of his love of truth but even while resisting evil he would have he would love the evil doer hatred would be an alien to the nature of a stu satyagrahi he would moreover be utterly fearless he would never bow down before evil whatever the consequences in gandhi's eyes non violence was not a weapon of the weak and the cowardly only the strong and the brave could practice it even violence was a uh, preferable to cowardice In a famous article in his weekly journal Young India he wrote in 1920 that non-violence is the law of our species as violence is the law of the brute but that where there is only a choice between cowardice and violence i would advise violence i would rather have india resort to arms in order to defend her honor than that she should in a cowardly manner become or remain a helpless witness to her own dishonor he once summed up his entire philosophy of life as follows the only virtue i went to claim is truth and non violence i lay no claim to superhuman power 
आई वॉन्ट नन एनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट ऑफ गांधीज आउटलुक वॉज दैट ही वुड नॉट सेपरेट थॉट एंड प्रैक्टिस बिलीव एंड एक्शन हिज ट्रूथ एंड नॉन वॉयेंस वर मेन्ट फॉर डेली लिविंग एंड नॉट मेयरली फॉर हाई साउंडिंग स्पीचेज एंड राइटिंग्स गांधी जी मोर ओवर हैड इमेंस फेथ इन कैपेसिटी ऑफ द कॉमन पीपल टू फाइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टीन रेफरिंग टू द कॉमन पीपल हु फॉट अलॉन्ग विद हेम इन साउथ अफ्रीका इन द कोर्स ऑफ इज रिप्लाई टू एन एड्रेस ऑफ वेलकम एट मद्रास ही सेड यू हैव सेड दैट आई इंस्पायर्ड दीज ग्रेट मैन एंड वेमेन बट आई कैनॉट एक्सेप्ट दैट प्रपोजिशन इट वॉज दे the simple minded folk who worked away in faith never expecting a the slightest reward who inspired me who kept me to the proper level and who compelled me by their sacrifice by their great faith by their great trust in the great god to the work that i was able to do similarly in 1942 when he asked how he expected to resist the might of the empire he replied with the might of the dumb millions gandhi ji returned to the india gandhi ji returned to india in 1915 at the age of 46 he spent an entire year in traveling all over india understanding indian conditions and the indian people and then in 1916 founded the sabarmati ashram at ahmedabad where his friends and followers were to learn and practice the ideas of truth and non violence he also set out to experiment with his new method of struggle Chapter twelve, page number two hundred and twenty-three. We are starting with the Champaran Satyagraha, nineteen seventeen. Gandhi's first greatest experiment in Satyagraha came in nineteen seventeen in Champaran, a district in Bihar. The peasantry on the indigo plantations in the district was excessively oppressed by the European planters. They were compelled to grow indigo on at least three out of twentieth of their land. and to sell it on the prices fixed fixed by the planters similar conditions had prevailed earlier in bengal but as a result of major uprising during 1859 to 61 the peasants there had won their freedom from the indigo planters having heard of gandhi's campaigns in south africa several peasants of champaran invited him to come and help them accompanied by babu rajendra prasad मजर उल हुक मजर उल हक जी बी कृपलानी नरहारी पारेख एंड महादेव देसाई गांधी जी रीड रीच चंपारन इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटीन एंड बिकेम टू कंडक्ट अ डिटेल्ड इंक्वायरी इन टू द कंडीशन ऑफ द पीज एंट्री द इन्फ्यूरेटेड डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफिशियल्स ऑर्डर्ड हिम टू लीव चंपारन बट ही डिफाइड द ऑर्डर एंड वॉज विलिंग टू फेस ट्रायल एंड एम्प्रिजनमेंट This forced the government to cancel its earlier order and to appoint a committee of inquiry on which Gandhi ji served as a member. Ultimately, the disabilities disabilities from which the peasantry was suffering were reduced and Gandhi ji had won his first battle of civil disobedience in India. He had also a glimpse into the naked poverty in which the peasants of India lived. Ahmedabad mill strike in 1918 mahatma gandhi intervened in a dispute between the workers and the mill owners of ahmedabad he advised the workers to go on strike and to demand a 35% increase in the wages but he insisted that the workers should not use violence against the employers during the strike he undertook a fast on to unto death to strengthen the workers resolve to continue the strike but this fast also put pressure on the mill owners who relented on the fourth day and agreed to give the workers a 35% increase in their wages in 1918 crops failed in kheda district in gujarat but the government refused to remit land revenues and ins- insisted on full collection gandhi ji supported the peasants and advised them to withhold payment of revenue till their demand for remission was met The struggle was withdrawn when it was learned that the government had issued instructions that revenue should be recovered only from those peasants who could afford to pay. Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel was one of the many young persons who became Gandhi ji's followers during the Kheda peasant struggle. The ex- these experiences brought 
Gandhi ji in close contact with the masses whose interest he actively exposed all his life in fact he was first indian nationalist leader who identified his life and his manner of living with the life of the common people in time he became the symbol of poor india nationalist india and rebellious india three other causes were very dear to gandhi ji's heart the first was hindu muslim unity the second the fight against untouchability and the third the raising of the social status of women in the country he once summed up his aims as follows i shall work for an india in which the poorest shall feel that it is their country in whose making they have any effective voice an india in which there shall be no high class or low class or people of people an india in which all com- community shall live in perfect harmony there can be no room in such an india for the curse of untouchability women will enjoy the same rights as men this is the india of my dreams though a devout hindu gandhi ji's cultural and re- religious outlook was universalist and not narrow indian culture he wrote is neither hindu or islamic nor any other holy it is a fusion of all he wanted indians to have deep roots in their own culture but at the same time to acquire the best that other world cultures had to offer he said i want the culture of all lands to be blown about my house as freely as possible but i refuse to be blown off my feet by any i refuse to live in other people's houses as an interloper a beggar or a slave satyagraha against the rowlet act along with other nationalists gandhi ji was also aroused by the rowlet act in february 1919 he founded the satyagraha sabha whose members took a pledge to disobey the act and thus to court arrest and imprisonment here was a new method of struggle the nationalist movement whether under moderate or extremist leadership had here to confine its struggle into agitation big meetings and demonstrations refusal to cooperate with the government boycott of foreign cloth and schools or individual acts of terrorism were the only forms of political work known to the nationalist satyagraha immediately raised the movement to a new higher level nationalist could now act instead of merely agitating and giving only verbal expression to their dissatisfaction and anger it was moreover to rely increasingly on the political support of the peasants artisans and urban poor gandhi ji asked the nationalist workers to go to the villages this is where india lives he said he increasingly turned the face of nationalism towards the common man and the symbol of this transformation was to be khadi or hand spun and hand woven cloth which soon became the uniform of the nationalist he spun daily to emphasize the dignity of labor and the value of self reliance india's salvation would come he said when the masses were weakened from their sleep and became active in politics and the people responded magnificently to gandhi's call march and april 1919 witnessed a remarkable political awakening in india almost an entire country came to life there were hartals strikes processions and demonstrations the slogans of hindu muslim unity filled the year the entire country was electrified the indian people were no longer willing to submit to the degradation of foreign rule page number 225 the jallianwala bag massacre the government was determined to suppress the mass agitation it repeatedly lathi charged and fired upon unarmed demonstrators at bombay ahmedabad calcutta delhi and other cities gandhi ji gave a call for a mighty hartal on 6 april 1919 the people responded with unprecedented enthusiasm the government decided to meet the popular protest with repression particularly in punjab at this time was perpetrated one of the worst political crimes in modern history a large but unarmed crowd had gathered on 13th april 1919 at amritsar in punjab in jallianwala bag 
टू प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द अरेस्ट ऑफ देयर पॉपुलर लीडर्स डॉक्टर सैफुद्दीन किचलॉ डॉक्टर सत्यपाल एंड डॉक्टर सत्यपाल जनरल डायर द मिलिट्री कमांडर ऑफ अमृतसर डिसाइडेड टू टेरराइज द पीपल ऑफ अमृतसर इन टू कंप्लीट सबमिशन जलियावाला बाग वॉज अ लार्ज ओपन स्पेस विच वॉज एनक्लोज ऑन थ्री साइड्स बाय बिल्डिंग्स एंड हैंड ओनली वन एग्जिट ही सराउंडेड द बाग गार्डन विद हिज आर्मी यूनिट क्लोज द एग्जिट विद हिज ट्रूप्स एंड देन ऑर्डर्ड हिज मैन टू शूट इन टू द क्राउड ट्रैप्ड क्राउड विद राइफल्स एंड मशीन गन्स दे फायर्ड टिल देयर एम्यूनिशन वॉज एग्जॉस्टेड थाउजेंड्स वर किल्ड एंड वेड आफ्टर दिस मैसेकर मार्शल लॉ वॉज प्रोक्लेम्ड थ्रू आउट द पंजाब and people were submitted to the most uncivilized atrocities a liberal lawyer siva swami ayer who had received a knighthood from the government wrote as follows on the punjab atrocities the wholesale slaughter of hundreds of unarmed men of jallianwala bag without giving the crowd an opportunity to disperse the indifferences of the general dire to the condition of hundreds of people who were wounded in the firing the firing of machine guns into crowds who had dispersed and taken to their heels the flogging of men in public the order compelling thousands of students to walk 16 miles a day for roll calls the arrest and detention of 500 students and professors the compelling of school children of 5 to 7 to attend a parade to salute the flag the flogging of a marriage party the censorship of mails the closure of badshahi mosque for 6 weeks the arrest and detention of people without any substantial reasons the flogging of six of the biggest boys in the islamia school simply because they happen to be school boys and to be big boys the construction of an open cage for the confinement of arrested persons the invention of a novel punishments like crawling order the skipping order and other unknown or two systems of law civil or military the handcuffing and roping together of persons and keeping them in open trucks for 15 hours the use of aeroplanes and levick guns and the latest paraphernalia of scientific warfare against unarmed citizens the taking hostage of the taking of hostages and the confiscation of destruction of property for the purpose of securing the attendance of absentees the handcuffing of hindus and mohammedans in pairs with the object of demonstrating the consequences of hindu muslim unity the cutting off electric and water supplies from indian houses the removal of fans from indian houses and giving them for use by europeans the commandeering of all vehicles owned by indians and giving them to europeans for use these are some of the many incidents of administration of martial law which created a reign of terror in punjab and have shocked the people a wave of horror ran through the country as knowledge of punjab happenings spread people saw as if in a flash of ugliness and brutality that lay behind the facade of civilization that imperialism and foreign rule professed popular shock was expressed by great poet and humanist rabindranath tagore who renounced his knighthood in protest and declared the time has come when badges of honor make our shame glaring in their incongruous context of humiliation and i for my part wish to stand shone of all special distinctions by the side of my countrymen who for their so called insignificance are liable to suffer degradation not fit for human beings the khilafat and the non cooperation movement from 1919 to 1922 The new steam came into the nationalist movement with the Khilafat movement. We have seen earlier that the younger generation of educated Muslim and section of traditional divines and theologians had been growing more and more radical and nationalist. The ground for common political action by Hindus and Muslims had already been prepared by the Lucknow Pact. the nationalist agitation against the rowlet act had touched all indian people alike and brought hindus and muslims together in political agitation 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल एज हैव टू डिक्लेयर बिफोर द वर्ल्ड द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ हिंदू मुस्लिम यूनिटी एंड पॉलिटिकल एक्शन स्वामी श्रद्धानंद अस्टॉन्च आर एस एम आर लीडर वॉज आस बाय द मुस्लिम टू प्रीच फ्रॉम द पल्पिट ऑफ जामा मस्जिद एट डेली वाइल डॉक्टर किच लॉ अ मुस्लिम वॉज गिवन द की ऑफ द गोल्डन टेम्पल द सिक्स श्राइन एट अमृतसर एट अमृतसर सच पॉलिटिकल यूनिटी हैड बीन ब्रॉड बाउट बाय गवर्नमेंटल रिप्रेशन हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम्स वर हैंड कफ्ड टुगेदर मेड टू क्रॉल टुगेदर एंड ड्रिंक वाटर टुगेदर वेन ऑर्डनरीली अ हिंदू वुड नॉट ड्रिंक वाटर फ्रॉम द हैंड्स ऑफ अ मुस्लिम इन दिस एटमोसफियर द नेशनलिस्ट ट्रेंड अमंग द मुस्लिम्स टूक द फॉर्म ऑफ द खिलाफत एजिटेशन द पॉलिटिकली कॉन्शियस मुस्लिम्स वर क्रिटिकल ऑफ द ट्रीटमेंट मेटेड आउट टू द ऑटोमन टू द ऑटोमन और टर्किश एम्पायर बाय द ब्रिटेन एंड इट्स अलाइज हु हैड पार्टीशन डेट एंड टेकन अवे द थ्रेस फ्रॉम टर्की प्रॉपर दिस वॉज इन वॉयेशन ऑफ द अर्लियर प्लेज ऑफ द ब्रिटिश प्रीमियर लॉर्ड लॉयल्ड जॉर्ज हु हैड डिक्लेयर्ड नॉर आर वी फाइटिंग टू डिप्राइव टर्की ऑफ द रिच एंड रिनाउंड ए लैंड ऑफ एशिया माइनोर एंड थ्रेस विच आर प्री डोमिनेटली टर्किश इन रेस द मुस्लिम्स ऑल्सो फेल्ड दैट द पोजिशन ऑफ द सुल्तान ऑफ टर्की who was also regarded many as the caliph or the religious head of muslims over the religious places should not be undermined a khilafat committee was soon formed under the leadership of ali brothers mulana azad hakim ajmal khan and harsat mohani and a country wide agitation was organized the all india khilafat conference held at delhi in november 1919 decided to withdraw all cooperation from the government if their demands were not met the muslim league now under the leadership of nationalist gave full support to the national congress and its ag- agitation on political issues on their part the congress leaders including lokmanya tilak and mahatma gandhi viewed the khilafat agitation as a golden opportunity for cementing hindu muslim unity and bringing the muslim masses into the national movement they realized that different section of the people hindus muslim sikhs christians capitalists and workers peace and sanitations women and youth and tribal people and people of different regions would come into national movement through experience of fighting for their own different demands and seeing that the alien regime stood in opposition to them Gandhi ji looked upon the khilafat agitation as an opportunity of uniting Hindus and Mohammedans as would not arise in 100 years early in 1920s he declared that the khilafat question overshadowed that of the constitutional reforms and the punjab wrongs and announced that the that he would lead a movement of non cooperation if the terms of peace with turkey did not satisfy indian muslims in fact very soon gandhi ji became one of the one of the leaders of the khilafat movement chapter number 12 part 6 last paragraph page number 228 meanwhile the government had refused to annul the rawlat act make amends for the atrocities in punjab or satisfy the nationalist urge for self government in june 1920 an all party conference met at alabad and approved the program of boycott of schools colleges and law courts the khilafat committee launched a non cooperation movement on 31st august 1920 the congress met in a special session in september 1920 at calcutta only a few weeks earlier it had suffered a grievous loss lokman natilak had passed away on august 1 at the age of 64 but his place was soon taken by gandhi ji c r das and motilal nehru the congress supported gandhi's plan for non cooperation with the government till the punjab and khilafat wrongs were removed and swaraj established the people were asked to boycott government educational institutions law courts land legislatures to give up foreign cloth to surrender officially conferred titles and honors and to practice hand spinning and hand weaving for producing khadi later the program would include resignation from government service and mass civil disobedience including refusal to pay taxes congressmen immediately withdrew from elections and voters too largely boycotted them this decision to defy the most peaceful manner the government and its laws 
was endorsed at the annual session of the congress held at nagpur in december 1920 the british people will have to be will have to beware declared gandhi ji at nagpur that if they do not want to do justice it will be the bounden duty of every indian to destroy the empire the nagpur session also made changes in the constitution of congress provincial congress committees were recognized on the basis of linguistic areas the congress was now to be led by a working committee of 15 members including president and secretaries this would enable the congress to function as a continuous political organization and would provide it with the machinery for implementing its resolutions the congress organization was to reach down to villages small towns and mohallas and its membership fee was reduced to 4 annas 25 paise for today per year to enable the ruler and urban poor to become members the congress now char changed its character it became the organizer organizer and leader of the masses in the national struggle for freedom from foreign rule there was a general feeling of exhilaration political freedom might come years later but the people had begun to sh- shake off their duties shake off their slavish mentality it was as if they were the very air that india breathed had changed the joy and the enthusiasm of those days was something special for the sleeping giant it was beginning beginning to awake moreover hindus and muslims were marching together shoulder to shoulder at the same time some of the older leaders now left the congress they did not like the new turn the national movement had taken they still believed in the traditional methods of agitation as political work which were strictly confined with the four walls of the law they opposed the organization of the masses hartals strikes satyagrahs breaking of laws coating of imprisonment and other forms of militant struggle mohammad ali jinnah g s kharparde bipin chandrapal and ani besant were among the prominent leaders who left congress during this period in the year 1921 and 1922 were the witness an unprecedented movement of indian people thousands of students left government schools and colleges and joined national schools and colleges it was at this time that jamia millia islamia national muslim university of aligarh and bihar vidyapeeth the kashi vidyapeeth and the gujarat vidyapeeth came into existence the jamia millia later shifted to delhi acharya narendra dev dr zakir hussain and allah patrai were among the many distinguished teachers at these national college and universities hundreds of lawyers including chitrandan das popularly known as desh bandhu motilal nehru rajendra prasad saifuddin kichlo c rajgopalachari sardar patel t prabhakasam and asaf ali gave up their lucrative legal practices the tilak swaraj fund was started to finance the non cooperation movement and within 6 months over a crore of rupees were subscribed women showed great enthusiasm and freely offered their jewelry boycott of foreign clothes became mass movement huge bonfires of foreign clothes were organized all over the land khadi soon became a symbol of freedom In July 1921 the All India Khilafat Committee passed a resolution declaring that no muslim should serve in the British Indian Army In September the Ali brothers were arrested for sedition Immediately Gandhi ji gave a call for repetition of this resolution at a hundreds of meetings 50 members of All India Congress Committee issued a similar declaration that no indian should serve a government which degraded india socially economically and politically the congress working committee issued a similar statement the congress now decided to raise the movement to higher level it permitted the congress committee of a province to start civil disobedience or disobedience of british laws including non payment of taxes if in its opinion the people were not people were ready for it the government again took recourse to repression the activities of congress and khilafat volunteers who had begun to drill together and thus unite hindus and muslim political workers at lower levels were declared illegal by the end of 1921 all important national leaders except gandhi ji were behind bars 
along with 3000 others in november 1921 huge demonstrations greeted the prince of wales here to the british throne during his tour of india he had been asked by the government to come to india to encourage loyal among the people and the princes in bombay the government tried to suppress the demonstration killing 53 persons and wounding about 400 more chapter 12 page number 231 paragraph number 2 the annual session of the congress meeting at Ella Ahmedabad in December 1921 passed a resolution affirming the fixed determination of the Congress to continue the program of non-violent non-cooperation with greater vigour than hereto. Till Punjab and Khilafat wrongs were redressed and Swarajya is established. The resolution urged all Indians and in particular students to quietly without any demonstration to offer themselves for arrest by belonging to the volunteer organizations. All such satagrahis were to take a pledge to remain non-violent in word and deed, to promote unity among Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Parsis, Christians and Jews and to practice Swadeshi and wear only Khadi. A Hindu volunteer was to undertake to fight actively against untouchability. The resolution also called upon the people to organize whenever possible individual or mass civil disobedience along non-violent lines. The people now waited impatiently for the call for further struggle. The movement had moreover spread deep among the masses. Thousands of peasants in UP and Bengal had responded to the call of non-cooperation. In parts of UP, tenants refused to pay illegal dues to the zamindars. In Punjab, the Sikhs were leading a non-violent movement known as the Akali movement to remove corrupt merchants from the Gurdwaras and their places of worships. In Assam, the tea plantation labors went on strike. The, place, uh, the peasants of Midan, Midnapur refused to pay union board taxes. A powerful agitation led by Igrala Gopal Krishna Naya developed in Guntur district. The whole population of Chirala, a town in that district, refused to pay municipal taxes and moved out of the town. All village officers resigned in Pedna Padu. In Malabar, Northern Kerala, the Moplas or Muslim peasants created a powerful anti zamindar movement. The Viceroy wrote to the Secretary of State in February 1919 that the lower classes in the towns have become have been seriously affected by the non-cooperation movement. In certain areas, the peasantry have been affected, particularly in parts of Assam, Valley, United Provinces, Bihar, Odisha and Bengal. On 1st February 1922, Mahatma Gandhi announced that he would start a mass civil disobedience movement, including non-payment of taxes unless within 7 days the political prisoners were released and press freed from the government control. This mood of the struggle was soon transformed into retreat. On 5 February, a Congress procession of 3,000 peasants at Chauri Chora, a village in Gorakhpur, district of UP, was fired upon by the police. The angry crowd attacked and burned the police station, causing the death of 22 policemen. Other incidents of violence by crowds had occurred earlier in different parts of the country. Gandhiji was afraid that in the movement of popular ferment and excitement, the movement might easily take a violent turn. He was convinced that the nationalist workers had not yet properly understood nor learnt the practice of non-violence without of which he was convinced civil disobedience could not be a success. Apart from the fact that he would have nothing to do with violence, he also perhaps believed that the British would be able to easily crush a violent movement for people had not yet built up enough strength and stamina to resist massive government repression. He therefore decided to suspend the national, nationalist campaign. 
द कांग्रेस वर्किंग कमेटी मेट एट बरदोली इन गुजरात ऑन ट्वेल्थ फेब्रवरी एंड पास द रिजोल्यूशन स्टॉपिंग ऑल एक्टिविटीज विच वुड लीड टू ब्रेकिंग ऑफ लॉज इट अर्ज कांग्रेसमैन टू डोनेट देयर टाइम टू कंस्ट्रक्टिव प्रोग्राम्स पॉपुलराइजेशन ऑफ द चरखा नेशनल स्कूल टेम्परमेंट्स टेम्परमेंट्स टेम्परेंस रिमूवल ऑफ अनटचेबिलिटी एंड प्रमोशन ऑफ हिंदू मुस्लिम यूनिटी The Bardoli resolutions turned the country and had a mixed reception among the bewildered nationalists. While some had implicit faith in Gandhi ji and believed that the retreat was part of Gandhi's strategy of struggle, others, especially the younger nationalists, resented this decision to retreat. Subhash Bose, on one one of the popular and younger leaders of the Congress, had written in his autobiography, "The Indian Struggle." to sound the order of retreat just when public enthusiasm was reaching at the boiling point was nothing short of a natural national calamity the principal lieutenants of mahatma deshbandhu das pandit motilal nehru and lala lajpat rai who were all in prison shared a popular resentment i was with deshbandhu at that at the time and i could see that he was beside himself with anger and sorrow at the way mahatma gandhi was repeatedly bungling many other young leaders such as jawaharlal nehru had a similar reaction but both the people and the leaders had faith in gandhi ji and did not want to publicly disobey him they accepted his decision without open opposition the first non cooperation and civil disobedience movement virtually came to an end the last act of the drama was played when the government decided to take full advantage of the situation and to strike hard it arrested mahatma gandhi on 10th march 1922 and charged him with spreading disaffection against the government gandhi ji was sentenced to 6 years imprisonment after a trial which was made historic by the statement that the made before the court pleading guilty to the prosecutor's charge he invited the court to award him the highest penalty that can be inflicted upon me for what in law is a deliberate crime and what appears to me to me to be the highest duty of a citizen he traced the at length his own political evolution from a supporter to the british rule to its sharpest critic and said i came reluctantly to the conclusion that the british connection had made india more helpless uh, than she ever was before politically and economically a disarmed india has no power of resistance against the aggressors she has become so poor that little power of resisting famines little do town dwellers know how the semi starved masses of india are wisely sinking to lifelessness are slowly sinking to lifelessness little to our know that their miserable comfort represents the brokerage they get for the work they do for the foreign exploiter that the profits and the brokerage are stuck are sucked from the masses little do they realize that the government government abolished by law in british india carried on for the exploitation of the masses no sophistry no can explain away the evidence that the skeletons in many villages are present to the naked eye in my opinion administration of the law is prostituted consciously or consciously for the benefit of exploitation the greater misfortune is that englishmen and their indian associates in the administration of the country do not know that are engaged that they are engaged in the crime i have attempted to describe i am satisfied that many englishmen and indian officials honestly believe that they are administering one of the best system devices in the world and that india is making steady though slow progress they do not know that a stubble the that a subtle uh, subtle but effective system of terrorism and an organized display of force on the one hand and the deprivation of all powers of retaliation or self defense on the other have emasculated the people and induced in them a habit of 
simulation chapter number 12 page number 234 paragraph number 2 in conclusion gandhi ji expressed his belief that non cooperation with evil is as much a duty as is cooperation with good the judge noted that he was passing on gandhi ji the same sentence as was passed on lokmanya tilak in 1908 very soon the khilafat question also lost relevance the people of turkey rose up under the leadership of mustafa kamal pasha and in november 1922 deprived the sultan of his political power kamal pasha took many measures to modernize turkey and to make it a secular state he abolished the caliphate or the institution of caliph and separated the state from region by eliminating islam from the constitution he nationalized education granted women extensive rights introduced legal codes based on european models and took steps to develop agriculture and introduce modern industries all these steps broke the back of the khilafat agitation the khilafat agitation had made an important contribution to the non cooperation movement it had brought out urban muslims into the nationalist movement and had been thus responsible in the part for feeling of nationalist enthusiasm and exhilaration that prevailed in the country in those days some historians have criticized it for mixing religion with politics as a result they say religious consciousness spread to politics and in the long run the forces of communalism were strengthened this is true to some extent there was of course nothing wrong in nationalist movement taking up a demand that affected muslims only it was inevitable that different sections of society would come to understand the need for freedom through their particular demands and experience the nationalist leadership however failed to some extent in raising the religious political consciousness of the muslims to the higher plane of the secular political consciousness at the same time it should also be kept in view that the khilafat agitation represented much wider feelings of the muslims than their concern for the caliph it was in reality an aspect of the general spread of anti imperialist feelings among the muslims these feelings found concrete expression on the khilafat question after all there was no protest in india when kamal pasha abolished the caliphate in 1924 it may be noted that at this stage that even though the non cooperation and civil disobedience movement had been ended in apparent failure the national movement has been strengthened in more than one way nationalist sentiments and the national movement had now reached the remotest corners of the land millions of peasants artisans and urban poor had been brought into the national movement all strata of indian society had been politicized women had been drawn into the movement it is this politicization and act civilization of millions of men and women that imparted a revolutionary character to the indian national movement page number 235 chapter number 12 the british rule was based on the twin notions that the british ruled in india for good of indians and that it was invincible and incapable of being overthrown as we have seen earlier the first notion was challenged by the moderate nationalist who developed a powerful economic critique of colonial rule it was now during the mass phase of national movement that this critique was disseminated among common people by youthful agitators through speeches pamphlets dramas songs prabhat feries and newspapers the notion of invincibility of the british rule was challenged by satyagraha and mass rule as jawala nehru wrote in the dictionary in the discovery of india the essence of his gandhi ji's teachings was fearlessness not merely body courage but the absence of fear from the mind but the dominant impulse in india under british rule was that of fear pervasive oppressing strangling fear fear of the army fear of the police and the widespread secret service fear of the official class fear of laws meant to suppress 
and of prison fear of landlords agents fear of the money lender fear of unemployment and starvation which were always on threshold it was against this all pervading fear that gandhi ji quiet and determined voice was raised be not afraid a major result of non cooperation movement was that the indian people lost their sense of fear the brute strength of british power in india no longer frightened them they had gained tremendous self confidence and self esteem which no defeats and ro- retreats could shake this was expressed by gandhi ji when he declared that the fight that was commenced in 1920 is a fight to finish whether it lasts one month or one year or many months or many years the swarajists major development in the indian politics occurred during 1922 to 28 immediately the withdrawal of the non cooperation movement led to demoralization of the nationalist ranks moreover serious differences arose among the leaders who had to decide how to prevent the movement from lapsing into passivity one school of thought handed by c r das and motilal nehru advocated a new line of political activity under the changed conditions they said that nationalist could end the boycott of the legislative councils enter them obstruct their working according to official plans expose their weaknesses transform them into arenas of political struggle and thus use them to arouse public enthusiasm Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel, Dr. Ansari, Babu Rajendra Prasad, and others known as No Changers opposed council entry. They warned that legislative politics would lead to neglect of work among the masses, weaken nationalist fervor, and create rivalries among the leaders. They therefore continued to emphasize the constructive program of spinning. temperance hindu muslim unity removal of untouchability and grassroots work in the village and among the poor this would they said gradually prepare the country for a new round of mass struggle in december 1922 das and motilal nehru formed the congress khilafat swaraj swaraj party with dr with cr das as president and motilal nehru as one of the secretaries the new party was to function as a group within the congress it accepted the congress program except in one respect it would take part in council elections the swarajists and the no changers in now engaged in fierce political controversy even gandhi ji who had been released on 5 february 1924 on grounds of health failed to failed in his efforts to unite them but both were determined to avoid uh, the disastrous experience of 1907 split on at surat on the advice of gandhi ji the two groups agreed to remain in the congress though they would work in their separate ways even though the swarajists had little time for preparations they did very well in elections of november 1923 they won 42 seats out of 101 elected seats in the central legislative assembly with the cooperation of other indian groups they repeatedly outvoted the government in the central assembly in and in several of the provincial councils they agitated through powerful speeches on questions of the self government civil liberties liberties and industrial development in march 1925 they succeeded on in electing Vithal Bhai J Patel a leading nationalist leader as the president of central legislative assembly they filed they filled the political void at a time when the national movement was recouping its strength they also exposed the hollowness of reform act of 1919 but they failed to change the policies of the authoritarian government of india and found it necessary to walk out of the central assembly first in march 1926 and then in january 1930 chapter number 12 page number 236 last paragraph in the meanwhile the known cha- the no changers carried on quite constructive work symbolic of this work were hundreds of ashrams that came up all over the country where young men and women promoted charkha and khadi 
and worked among the lower caste and tribal people hundreds of national schools and colleges came up where young persons were trained in a non colonial ideological framework moreover constructive workers served as the backbone of civil disobedience movement as their active organizers while the swarajists and the no changers worked on their separate ways there was no basic difference between the two and because they kept on best best of terms and recognized each other's anti imperialistic character they could readily unite later when the time was ripe for a new national struggle meanwhile the nationalist movement and the swarajist suffered another grievous blow in death of cr das popularly known as desh bandhu in june 1925 as non cooperation movement petered out and people felt frustrated communism reared its ugly head the communal elements took advantage of the situation to propagate their views and after 1923 the country was repeatedly plunged into communal rights the muslim league and the hindu mahasabha which was founded in december 1917 once again became active the result was that the growing feeling that all people were indians first received a setback even the swarajist party whose main leaders motilal nehru and das were staunch nationalist was split by communalism a group known as responsivists including madan mohan malviya lal rajpat rai and n c kelkar offered cooperation to the government so that the so called hindu interests might be safeguarded they accused motilal nehru of letting down hindus of being anti hindu of favoring cow slaughter and of eating beef the muslim communalists were no less active in fighting for the loaves and fishes of office gandhi ji who had repeatedly asserted that hindu muslim unity must be our creed for all time and under all circumstances tried to intervene and improve the situation In September 1924 he went on a 21 days fast at Delhi in Maulana Muhammad Ali's house to do penance for the inhumanity revealed in the communal rights but his efforts were of little avail the situation in country appeared to be dark indeed there were several political apathy Gandhi was living in retirement the swarajists were split communalism was flourishing gandhi ji wrote in may 1927 my only hope lies in prayer and answer to prayer but behind the senses forces of national upsurge had been growing when in november 1927 the announcement of the formation of simon commission came india again emerged from darkness and entered a new era of political struggle thank you everyone that was the end of chapter number 12 struggle for swaraj part 1 from 1919 to 1927 in the next video we'll start with the next chapter that happens to be the last chapter of the book chapter number 13 that is part 2 of struggle for swaraj stay tuned all the best do share and subscribe the channel for more such videos and keep supporting us thank you everyone